talk with the density of 3.3 gram per cubic centimeter. And there is a bucket of water here, and I drop the rock. V initial is zero, let's say. And we do like a kinematic problem with this. We can say, what's going to happen if that rock is dropped right there? And then the height of this is uh, two meters. Or maybe it could be a swimming pool or anything. So uh, what is its acceleration in the water? And how many seconds will it take to hit the bottom of the water? So it could be, remember the equation we derived, the acceleration equals to g times 1 minus density of uh, object, object over density of fluid. <coughs> or I believe it was the density, uh, no, it was density of fluid over density of object, right? 1 minus density of fluid over density of object. So that was his new acceleration, okay? So A is equal to 9.8, one minus density of uh, fluid is one over 3.3. So basically what you're saying is that because the density of the fluid is buoying it up, instead of accelerating gravity, it's accelerating uh, less by that ratio. So its new acceleration is one minus one divided by 3.3, its acceleration is 70% roughly of that of gravity, times 9.8. 6.83 meters per second squared. It accelerates at 6.83 meters per second squared, and then you can solve any kind of kinematics problem with that, okay? How long is it gonna take it to accelerate uh, two meters, okay? Then you can say, y is equal to v initial t plus half a t squared, v initial is zero, so this is two meters, half 6.83 t squared, and uh, so you're gonna have four divided by 6.83, and then to the power 0.5. So set point 0.7, Point uh, seven six five seconds it's going to take. And then if it asks what's the final velocity, we could answer that. The other kind of thing we could do is we could hang the, the rock. <clears throat> we, could, uh, we could ask several kinds of questions. Uh, before hanging the rock, uh, we could say, while the rock is falling, what is its apparent weight? Okay. apparent weight of the rock. And remember we derived an equation for that, that would be the um, that would be the uh, actual weight times the density of the object minus density of the fluid over density of the object. Right? So uh, what would its apparent weight be? So its apparent weight, or we could call that W prime, is equal to its actual weight, which is uh, uh, I guess the, the problem told us the density was 3.3, uh, didn't tell us the weight, right? So let's say it was uh, 0.8 kilogram was the rock. <clears throat> so you could say 0.8 kilogram times 9.8, because your uh, weight is uh, mass times gravity, times the density of the object, which was 3.3 minus 1 over the density of the object, 3.3. Okay? So the apparent weight is going to be 0.8 times 9.8 times 2.3 divided by 3.3. So the apparent weight is reduced 
because again the fluid boils it up by a factor of the how much the fluid boils it up to its actual density. Okay, so you would have uh, 0.8 times 9.8 times 2.3 over 3.3. The apparent weight would be 5.46 uh, newtons. Or you could even say, what is its apparent mass? What is the apparent mass of the object? So all it's asking is, divide this by 9.8. We could say, what is its apparent mass? 0.56 uh, kilogram. So its actual mass was 0.8 kilogram, but it feels like a 0.56 kilogram mass in water. Okay. Now I could do something like this. I could say, well, what if instead of allowing it to fall, there was a string holding it up? Okay? There's a string holding it up, and you have the weight mg. What would be the tension in the string? So you see, you could do different kinds of things here. What would be the tension in the string? How much tension should it apply to hold it up? Well, you have the buoyant map, buoyant force, plus the tension plus the buoyant force is equal to mg, right? So what, how much tension would it register? Well, <clears throat> the difference between the uh, weight and the buoyant force is actually the apparent weight, right? So at t is equal to mg minus fb, and this is equal to the apparent weight, you see? So basically, if you allow something to fall, its apparent weight is simply the difference between its actual weight and the buoyant force. If you don't allow it to fall and you hold it with a certain string, that string will register that apparent weight, okay? It's the actual weight minus the buoyant force, and that's equal to the apparent weight, and that's equal to 5.46 newtons. Okay. Now let's say let's ask something like this. Let's say the scale. Let's say this. Uh, there was a big, huge bucket of water, and it was sitting on a scale here, and this one was reading uh, 2,000 newtons. But let's make it a little more, a little less. Let's say it was reading. Uh, 200 newtons before you put the object there. Now you put the object there, how much is the new reading going to be? Okay. How much is the new reading going to be? Well, whether you're allowing the object to fall or uh, uh, you are holding it with a string, what's happening here? What's happening to the dynamics? Well, the water is holding the object up with a buoyant force, and then if you are also holding it up with a tension T, then it's not accelerating, right? So then what's happening is the object is going to push the water down with a buoyant force, action-reaction, okay? So the water pushes the object up with FB, the object pushes FB down on the water. Boom, 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 all over. And that force propagates itself all the way down to the surface. So if the scale with just the glass and the water was showing 200 newtons, then the, it should go up by a factor of Fb, okay, by the buoyant force. So how much is that going to be? Is that going to be 5.46? Not really. That's the apparent weight. Okay. Remember the apparent weight is the actual weight minus the buoyant force, which is equal to 5.46. The actual weight is what? Well, the actual weight is 0.8 times 9.8. So the actual weight is equal to 7.84, yeah, 7.84 newtons, and then the buoyant force, which we hadn't calculated 